Well, welcome to Grace. Good morning. <laughs> I have been scooched over to make room for our treasure hunt and our VBS um, decor. Uh, we had so much fun this week, and we'll be talking about that a little bit in, uh, during the announcements. But I just wanted to kind of explain. We have a summer blast is what we like to call it. And uh, those of you who are old school used to call it va vacation Bible school. Uh, so it's just kind of a, a neat thing that we have for the kids. And we can talk about that later. But let's all stand and sing song real quick, okay? We'll get going and just kind of turn our hearts and our minds to the Lord this morning and um, for what we're here for and all the things that we're going to do today. This is the day that you have made. Whatever comes, I won't complain. For all my hope is in your name. And all my joy awaits your praise, yeah. I give thanks for all you have done. And I will sing of your mercy and your love, your love. Lord, I am grateful. When I was down, you brought me out and set my feet on higher ground. So here I stand, you are my God, your faithfulness, my solid rock. For all you have done And I will sing of your mercy and your love Your love is unfailing Lord, I'm grateful I give thanks for all you have done I won't forget all the battles you have won Your love is unfailing Lord, I'm grateful And as we lift our hands, the heavens open, heavens open. So let our lives declare the love our God has spoken over us. And as we lift our hands, the heavens open. Welcome. Let's just pray our service real quick. We have so much going on this morning. It's just crazy, and it's awesome at the same time. Father, we thank you, and we praise you, Lord. I pray for everybody in this room that you would just um, take your spirit and abide over us, Lord, as we gather in your name. And we just pray for um, those who are maybe having to watch from home for whatever reason today, that you just cover them as well. We thank you, Father. We thank you for all your blessings. We thank you for our um, the the day that we celebrate technically tomorrow, maybe today for people who live out here. <laughs> and uh, we just thank you, Father. We praise you, and we pray you'd be over everything to serve us, and it'd be pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead and take a seat, because we've got a little video to watch. Freedom. It's something we cherish in this country. 
The idea of a free society is embedded into the very core of our nation. Many have died defending it, and many have fought diligently to preserve it. So where has it gone? We've become a nation bound by division, chained by hatred, and consumed by selfishness. There's an epidemic of violence, poverty, brokenness. Does this look like freedom? The Bible tells us we're called to be free, but it also says to use that freedom to serve one another humbly, in love. Maybe that's what we're missing in America. Today, we celebrate Independence Day. Perhaps it's time we recognize that true independence is found only in a lasting dependence on God. For where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. Um, it's a little different from the Independence Days I remember growing up, and our nation has changed, and uh, it is um, a sad thing, but there is always hope, and there is hope, and I loved what that video ends with, that where the, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's, there's freedom. We can even have freedom through God in difficult situations. And because uh, God is more powerful than all those things. And that's something for us to remember. So welcome. We are glad you guys are here this morning. On the way in, you should have received a welcome folder. Um, and on the right-hand side of that is a communication form to let us know that you're here. We do appreciate that, if you would fill that out and uh, drop it in the little baskets by the door on your way out and uh, tell us what you're having for dinner this week and we'll choose which day we show up, okay? <laughs> no, we'll send you a nice little card and say thanks for coming and that's about it. Uh, but there is room on there for your prayer requests, which we take very seriously and we gather and pray for those because we don't think there's anything we can do that is more powerful than carrying our requests before the throne of God. So please uh, take advantage of that. We consider it a privilege to pray for you guys. And, uh, and uh, let's see, what else? I don't have my list, so I'm kind of winging it here. Ah, if you have your digital device, I would, uh, we would appreciate it if you check in on Facebook, let us know that you're here. That raises our profile in the community so people can find us if they're looking for a church. And, uh, and, and Julie's over there playing games, but it looks like she's checking in on Facebook, I think so. <laughs> And those of you who are joining us online, we're glad you're here today. Uh, you can check in on the chat and let us know that you're here. And also, you can send your prayer request to prayer at gbcsl.com, and we'll get that into the regular list as well. Um, so what do you guys think of our new decor? We invested a lot of money in this. Um, we just thought things were looking a little boring, so the, here's where we are for the foreseeable future which is sometime later today <laughs> as we're going to uh, get this. But we had Summer Blast this week, VBS, and oh man, the kids had such a great time. It was, uh, it was exhausting. They weren't tired. <laughs> you know, they came out of it with all the energy they normally have. But it was just a great time, and it was, uh, it was a wonderful thing to do. And Tim is not in here. Tim and Christine, Family Ministries Director, put all this on and just did a great job. And so if you see them wandering around campus, make sure to connect with them and tell them thank you for all they've done here for this, and, uh, and we look forward to uh, where we can even go in future years. So um, there's more. So this coming Saturday, there is a concert in the park out there off of uh, Hellendale Road, and what we like to do is go out there and, and oversee the kids' games. Uh, and we take our flags out, and so people know Grace Bible Church is, is out there, and we care about the community. Um, however, we're running low on signups for this one. And so if you would be willing to come out and work with us, and, and hey, and you get the concert, and you can go wander around to the vendor booths and all that kind of stuff, 
but it also it raises our visibility again in the community and lets people know that we care about them. So uh, we would appreciate it if you'd stop and sign up for that before you head out today, and I think we'll remind you at the end. And with that, I think that's it. So we'll now continue in worship with the offering if the ushers will come forward. Um, but we consider this a part of worship. This is one of the things we do to make a, a, a difference in the world, to reach out to people who may be discouraged, um, struggling with various things, and to just let them know that there is hope, there is peace, there is freedom. God does care about them. And so it's an important thing. Actually, the, the funds you give go around the world because we have organizations we support in all parts of the world um, that are making a difference. We've had people in Poland who are working with Ukrainian refugees that you're making a difference there. So we appreciate that. However, I also want to say if you're visiting today, please don't feel any obligation. We're just glad you're here. This is for those who call Grace Bible Church their home church to, to partner together to make a difference. And so... Uh, with that, let's pray for the offering. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity um, to be a light in dark times, in, in difficult places, um, to encourage those who aren't sure how they're going to move forward, to encourage people who are giving up on hope. We pray, Lord, that you would take this offering, that you would multiply it to uh, meet needs financial, physical, emotional needs in this community and throughout the world. We ask your blessing on the gift and on the giver, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. What is this love that won't relent? It's calling out with heaven's breath Who's reaching wide to save our souls Only you What is this grace that makes no sense That we could never recompense Who's reaching wide to save our souls only you, only you, only you. There is no one like our God. There is no one like our God. There is no other God who can save. There is no one like our God. Who shaped the world within his hands? Only you. Who set the sky upon the hills and told the waters to be still? Who spoke to form the universe? Only you. Only you.
who can say there is no one like our God. Declare it this morning. There is no one like our God. There is no other God who can say there is no one like our God. Amen. Let's praise him. Um, we always have our, for those that are visiting this morning, we always have our communion on the first Sunday of the month. And um, I'd just like to if, preface that, you know, we want to take that with uh, the right heart and everything. And if, if you are um, not haven't done that or don't know what it is or anything, don't feel obligated to take it. Um, it's something that's, that's for believers. Christ tells us to, to take it. Uh, well, Paul says, take it with worthily you know, and with thinking about it. So I just want to turn our hearts to that this morning, and we'll sing this song leading into it. Get here in the right key. How deep the Father's love for us How vast beyond all measure That He should give His only Son To make a wretch His treasure How great the pain of searing loss The Father turns His face as wounds which bar the chosen one bring many sons to glory behold the man upon a cross my sin upon his shoulders a shame I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is finished. Good morning, church. Good morning. One more time. Good morning, church. Good morning. Frank is missing. <laughs> okay, as we come to communion, let us empty our hearts and our minds of evil thoughts, ill will, hatred, or anything. The definition of communion is the sharing or exchanging of intimate thoughts or feelings, especially when the exchange is on a mental or spiritual level. This means relationship 
This means a connection with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You can have that connection with Jesus. It is yours to choose freely. Jesus states two things. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is the only way to the Father, and he provides us with the Holy Spirit upon acceptance of him. John 14 and 6, Jesus answered and said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So I'm saying to you, Jesus is the only way. Let's bow our head in prayer. Father God, as we come before you in communion today, we come humbly, we empty our hearts, and we come to receive communion with you, the Holy Spirit, and fellowship with you. We desire this relationship with you, this walk with you, that we can only obtain through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who died upon the cross for us. Father, forgive us of any iniquities that we have, and let us be able to share in this communion with you, with empty hearts and empty minds, and praise for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, the communion cups are doubled up. The wine is on top, or the juice is on top, and the bread is on the bottom. So take both from each other. Okay, we got it. All together. And when he had given thanks, he broke bread and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's eat together. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is a new covenant of my blood. Do th t this do often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Take and drink. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. This concludes communion.
But if you don't remember anything I said, it's always about a relationship with the Father through the Son. Get that down first, and then you become obedient, and the fruits of the Spirit will follow. And trust me, the fruits of the Spirit will follow. It won't be all kind of different blessings, but it will be blessings in your life that you'll be able to see God's hand moving you on through your life. I'm living proof. Amen. Okay, I've got to rearrange a little bit here. It's like I'm breaking things. Uh, I think you should have someone coming by. You can pass your little cups to the end of the aisle and people will pick them up or you can stick them. Actually, on the bottoms of these seats, there's little holders for them, so you could do that. Um, it's worth fancy, yes. Does anybody need a copy of the notes? Should have received notes on your way in, but we need some back there. Anywhere else? No? How do you like this, guys? I coordinated with a butterfly. Can you see that? <laughs> and with a frog's legs. I've never seen a frog with legs this color, but you know. Well, putting it off a little bit because I have a confession I need to make this morning. I am struggling with an addiction. And like many addictions, it can be harmful can bring all kinds of troubles into your life, fear and anxiety and stuff like that. But I suspect many of you struggle with the same addiction. And that addiction is following the news. Um, it can be a good thing in some ways, but ultimately you have to realize all these different news agencies somewhere in there, man, they got some fake news happening. You know, and uh, it's a good thing to follow news because we should know what's happening in the world around us, but it can lead to fear, and it can lead to depression, it can lead to anxiety, and it can lead to anger and rage and violence. Just like our Independence Day video showed, it's, it's, it's kind of disturbing at times. I mean, it's always been that way, but these negative effects seem to have just uh, exploded over the past couple of years. You know, our nation has become so divided on so many issues that it's hard to know what to think. And I pay attention to the news, but I don't believe half of it. And it'd bring it down a little overall, probably. <laughs> um, and as I've said before, the news agencies are basically businesses whose main goal is to make money. That's, that's their reason they're there. The larger the audience, the more advertisers they'll get. And so they want to keep you stirred up. So you've got to see what the latest thing is because it raises the audience and advertisers pay more money. You know, people keep watching. And I'm guilty. <laughs> I think I do fairly well at not getting too worked up about it because I can see the bias in all of it and they all have an agenda and they don't usually lie outright, but what they will do is report this story, and the other, side, the other side reports that story. And it's what they report and what they don't report that it comes down to. It's not quite as bad, but it's still deceptive, you know. And we are left trying to figure out what to think. What's really important, what to believe, what, what can be ignored, and what's true and what is not true. And we're constantly blasted with a thousand ideas from a thousand different directions. And these days it seems that every movie, every TV show, every book, every magazine are trying to influence you. Not to mention social media personalities that call themselves influencers. I mean, they're right up front about it. They want to influence you. What you think, what you believe. And it works, you know. Because when I was a kid, I would never believe that people would be accepting some of the ideas that are now common in our world, and some of them written into law. And how do we make sense of it? How do we make sense of where we are in this world? 
And something that makes it even more confusing for Christians is that there are professing believers on opposite sides of the same issue. It's not even like Christians line up in the same place. And so it's, it can be so confusing. And we live in a society of profound confusion with different sides of different issues, hating and condemning the other side, and, and yet with nothing more than opinion and emotion on which to base their ideas. Opinions, a view or judgment formed about something not necessarily based on fact or knowledge. We don't know if there's any foundation other than what someone thinks. And why should we believe, why should we believe some of that, you know? And basically what I'm talking about here is a search for truth. And it's hard to decide based on what society says, because society says everything, a thousand different points of view, and some of the arguments seem to sound pretty good. And some people, actually a lot of people, have given up and they've just uh, decided it's impossible to really know what is true or what is not. So they, th they say things like, well, people can have their own truth, and, and this person's truth can be different than that person's truth. And what that really means is they're saying that two opposite ideas can both be true. The Bible describes a scene where Jesus is on trial before Pontius Pilate. And he tells Pontius Pilate that he's come into the world to testify to the truth. And Pilate responds with a question, what is truth? But what's really kind of interesting in the, uh, in the description is that Pilate doesn't wait for an answer. I mean, so was he really asking a question? Or was he just saying, I think like a lot of people do today, what is truth? He's just blowing it off. Because you can't know what truth is. Either there is no truth or the truth can't be known. It's the common ideas. But there is an answer. Did you know the truth has a definition? If you ask someone to define truth, they might struggle with it a little bit. But, I mean, the dictionary addresses that, and the dictionary says this, truth is that which is in alignment with fact or reality. That which aligns with reality. And from the perspective of the Christian faith, actually of all monotheistic faiths in general, God himself is the ultimate truth. And absolute truth is that which absolutely aligns with the character and identity of God himself. And so we live in a world that has largely rejected the existence of God. And with that rejection goes any basis for truth other than their own opinion. And so a lot of the people you see out protesting on one side or the other, they may call it truth, but sometimes it's not based on anything solid. It's an opinion. They have no other standard of truth. And that brings us to a sense of uncertainty throughout much of society. Confusion, doubt, everybody thinking their... Listen to this. Everybody thinks their opinion should define society. What I think should be what happens everywhere is really what we come down to. And that's the world we're living in here in the United States, and it's a source of the conflict that we see all around us in our courts, in our streets, in our homes... And it's an especially tough environment for kids. You know, as they begin to grow up, they're struggling to figure out who they are, why they exist, and, and what they believe. And it is not easy. It's never been easy. I think it's more difficult now. And it's not an easy job for parents either because they face the, the multitude of voices that are trying to tell their kids what's important in life, what's true. And so it seems like an impossible task to navigate through that. But there is hope. There is a path to raising godly kids in an uncertain world. And that path is found by allowing God to be your ultimate source of truth. Before we go on, let's pray. Lord, we know... Um, that you are not confused by what's going on in this world. 
You see the end from the beginning. You know what's going to happen here and around the world. And, and the actions of humanity do not overcome your plan for this world. You've told us what you're, what you're doing and how you're doing it. Pray that you help us to see that, help us to understand how to grab a hold of that truth and, and allow it to sustain us in crazy days. So we pray that you would open our ears and our hearts this morning to understand a little more of what you would have us know and to draw a little closer to you. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, one of my favorite illustrations about how we form our beliefs is a sponge. A sponge soaks things up. What does it soak up? Well, whatever it's immersed in. You know, it can be immersed in many different things. Could be water, could be vinegar, could be ammonia. You could put it in a, a, a pan of stagnant pond water and it would absorb bacteria and toxins that could kill you if you were to drink it. Sponges absorb whatever they're in. And here's the thing. I think there are many in our world who have developed their values and beliefs by absorbing them from culture, often without realizing it. You know, ideas are current, and, and, and our, our friends and school and parents and all these different places influence, and, and we don't always realize what's happening. Not aware of how much their environment is influencing them, and, and Kids who are just forming an idea of what's important in life, they're extremely influenced by those around them, especially by their peers. You know, peer pressure. And, and, and <laughs> when I was teaching school, it was kind of funny because I actually saw kids do this. They would say, um, well, the other kids are doing this. And I, I remember one, Aaron, you know who I mean, said, no, no, that's not how you do it. You tell them all the cool kids are doing this <laughs> because that influences them. You know, well, they want to be cool. So it's hard. You know, when I was a kid, you were just, your peer pressure was that group in your classroom or whatever it is. But nowadays, it's, it's coming through people you know, and it's coming through other avenues, that, uh, strangers, through social media, through TikTok videos, and a hundred other sources are telling kids what's important and who they should be and who they should believe. And, and it's typically just opinion. And if a kid's metaphorical sponge is dry, they'll suck those ideas up with no resistance at all. But parents can influence that. Parents have the option to fill their kids up with something better than the confusion of this world. But in order to do that, parents have to be sure about their own source of truth. You know, or are you parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles? Are you being influenced by what some news channel or media, social media outlet says is true? How do you know what's true? What is your source of truth? Because those ideas, they seem to change by the minute. They're they're unstable. And they're untrustworthy. They are uncertain. And so we have to be careful about these things. Because on the other hand, God's truth never changes. Because, because it's true. <laughs> so use that truth to fill your kids' sponges. To fill your kids with good, clean water. Not the stagnant ideas of culture. The first thing we have to do is decide what to accept as a source of truth. Society's opinions or what's revealed by God. Oh, let's see. Society's opinions or the almighty God's. It's, it's quite a contrast. The pollution of this world or the promise of Jesus. To fill with clean water. Jesus promises that we can be filled with not just clean water, but living water. And he says this, this is in John 7, 37 to 38. On the last day of the festival, Jesus stood and he shouted to the crowds, anyone who is thirsty may come to me 
Anyone who believes in me may come and drink, for the Scripture declares, rivers of living water will flow out of his heart. Living water. Hmm, there's a choice. Stagnant water, living water. I just don't know. <laughs> but, I mean, people are kind of there. And then here's something I found. I've, this just hit me last night. I haven't tested it yet, but I'm sure about it, you know. A sponge that is already full of clean water will not soak up dirty water. When it is saturated and can't hold anything more, it's not going to be infiltrated by all that stuff. So if we put a kid in an uncertain or unhealthy environment when his sponge is already full, he's not going to be fooled by those things. As a matter of fact, some of the clean water that fills that child, it's going to trickle out to those around him. So, how can a parent keep their kids full of living water? So that they don't soak up the ideas of an unstable and an uncertain society. Well, the Bible tells us how. In one of the most important passages, this was written a thousand years before the time of Christ in the time of Moses. So this is in Deuteronomy 6. Actually, if you have your Bibles, and we're kind of weird, you know, Grace Bible Church, we think it's kind of nice to have you bring your Bible. So anyway, if you have your Bible on a hard copy or an app on your phone or whatever it may be, we'd encourage you to follow along on this. But one day Jesus was asked what the most important commandments were. And here's his answer. This is in Matthew recorded this. He says, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And what Jesus is doing here is he is quoting this thing that Moses wrote 12, 1,300 years earlier. And this is in Deuteronomy 4, and, and, and it says this, Listen, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. It's a direct quote that Jesus gives. And to this day, this verse is the central prayer of all Jews worldwide. It's called the Shema, and they recite it every day. And it's what Jesus quotes as the most important commandment. Then the passage in Deuteronomy goes on. It says this, You must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I am giving you today. Okay, what commands? Well, the one Jesus quoted about loving God, but there's more. Let me give you some backstory. So the setting for this passage is in the, the Middle Eastern desert. And through Moses, God is speaking to the Hebrew people, former slaves in Egypt, who are traveling through the desert on their way to the promised land. God has rescued them from slavery in Egypt, and now he's teaching them what it means to be his people. And as part of that, God tells them how they should live. In fact, he gives them a list. I need a drum roll. Don, can you jump back there and give us a <laughs> The top ten. God gives us a top ten list. We call it the Ten Commandments. So let's review those. You didn't know there was going to be a quiz, did you? <laughs> who, who, somebody, first one, anybody? That's right. <laughs> I mean, that's what I heard. <laughs> so, uh, you must not have any other God but me. God alone. Number two, you must not make for yourself an idol of any kind or an image of anything in the heavens or on the earth or under the sea. You must not misuse the name of the Lord your God. The Lord will not let you go unpunished if you misuse his name. Number four, observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy as the Lord your God has commanded you. Honor your father and mother as the Lord your God commanded you. comes with a promise. You will live a long, full life in the land your God is giving you. Then uh, you must not murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not lie. No false testimony against your neighbor. No talking people down, especially when you know it's just made up. This, 
Another uh, crossword puzzle, another six-letter word for this, gossip. Um, you must not covet. Don't get worked up over your neighbors. Wife, house, land, servants. How many of you have neighbors with oxes or donkeys? You got, okay, Labradors and cats. Um, you don't covet the things that belong to your neighbor. Now, there's something really interesting in this list that I think maybe people don't realize. A lot of times is they're not just about our relationship with God. The first three commandments are about our interaction with God. The fourth one, keep the Sabbath day holy. You know, Jesus said, hey, the Sabbath, uh, man was not made for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for man. That's to our benefit. God is saying, dude, you need a break once a week at least. And, and keep that day and keep it holy. Focus on me. But from 5 through 10, it's not focused on our relationship with God. It's focused on how we get along with other people, how we treat other people, because this is what it's about. If you've ever had anything stolen from you, you know, that's not right. That does not build strong relationships. These things are about how to function in a healthy way in society. And these are the commands that God says, pay attention to these. Over half of the Ten Commandments tell us how to treat other people. And it makes sense when you consider that Jesus, who, who when he's asked about the greatest commandments, like I said a minute ago, he said we should love God with our whole being. But then he added another command. This is in Matthew right after that. And he says the second command is equally important. Love your neighbor as much as you love yourself. And then listen to this. All, the entire law and all the demands of the prophets are fulfilled by these two statements. Love God, love others. That's the essence of it. According to Jesus, all of God's law is summed up in these two commandments. But we're not really very good at, we don't get this the way we should. So God has to go into more detail in the Bible and explaining what it looks like to fulfill these things. It takes a lot of ink for God to tell us that because there's over 600 commandments that are refining and defining these things for how he wants us to live. But the main idea is really basic. Love God and love other people. It's the foundational idea you need to raise godly kids in an uncertain world. This is the thing to teach them. But a problem arises because we even run into disagreements over the definition of love. And so all these other commands are there to help us understand those things. Ten commandments are kind of a summary. Three commandments about God and, and seven about loving others and, and living healthy lives. And now we get to the point about raising godly kids as this continues. Because God says this, oh, by the way, about these commandments... He says, he gives us instructions on these. Oops, sorry. Wait, am I off here? No. Here's what he says about the commands. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you're at home, when you're on the road, when you're going to bed, when you get up in the morning. Tie them to your hands. Wear them on your foreheads as reminders. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. In other words, to raise godly kids, fill your children up with God's instructions about how to live. Fill them up like little sponges. We're going to take a brief look at each one of these statements. God says this, You must commit yourself wholeheartedly to these plans that I am giving you today. And here's how that works. These commands, repeat them again and again to your children. Repeat them again and again. We know that repetition is one of the keys to learning. And this command is telling us to go over these commands again and again with our kids. Memorize them. You know, I think, we'd, I think we might have trouble finding someone in this day and age who could recite the Ten Commandments. We've forgotten them. Jesus said, no, remember these things. If you repeat them again and again, it doesn't take long to memorize them. I mean, print them out. Put them in your kid's room. 
so that he's reminded of them. Make a game of memorizing. Repeat these commands again and again. Teach them to your children. And he says, talk about them while you're at home. Talk about them while you're on the road. Let these ideas fill your conversation and fill your mind and talk about why it's important to worship God only. And and tell them what the, the, the commandment means about not making or worshiping idols. Tell them why they shouldn't steal. And it's a great discussion topic, these ideas as you're driving back and forth to school or baseball or dance or Costco or whatever. Then, when you're going to bed and when you're getting up, you know, I mean, you look for opportunities to set the tone for the day. My parents did this. I mean, during breakfast, my my mother would direct the conversation to, to spiritual things before I'd head off to school. And then as an elementary student, I lived close enough to walk home for lunch. And so I would do that, and, and the radio would be tuned to a station with a Christian programming for kids, and I would listen to the KYB Club, the Know Your Bible Club, with my grilled cheese and tomato soup before I headed back to school. And up until a certain age, my parents had come in at bedtime, they'd pray with me, and as I got older, there was always... Christian reading material around. I remember when I'd visit my sister, uh, who may be watching, hi. Uh, she always had some kind of Christian literature in the bathroom, you know. Thank you for that. I think it played a role in my development. Of course, nowadays, we have a phone with us all the time. <clears throat> Open my devotional app and go down, oh, I got a Facebook notification. <laughs> Oh, oh, Instagram. Oh, look at that picture they posted. <laughs> Bathroom selfies. I don't get it. <laughs> then the passage says, these commands, tie them to your, uh, wait, to go back one, tie them to your hands, wear them on your forehead as reminders. And I think most believers today view this as symbolic, but in biblical times, they saw it as literal. So the ancient Jews, and actually a lot of modern Jews, literally do this. That strap on the guy's arm has scripture verses printed on it. He binds it to his arm. Uh, He he wears what's called a phylactery, the little thing you can see on top of his head there, that contains scripture. So they're taking this verse literally. Literally. And now Jesus, in his day, he scolded some of the religious leaders because they wore those devices just for show. The little phylactery on their head, man, they'd have big ones made. So nobody could miss, look how spiritual this guy is. And I think when Jesus criticized that, it was it's seen by a lot of Christians as a release from the legalism of those things. Because elsewhere, the Bible talks about the Word of God written on our heart, which is far better than paper in a box on your head. So the point is, help your kids become familiar with what the Bible is and what it says. And then there's one more instruction in this section. It says, these laws, these commands that I'm giving you, write them on the doorposts of your house. Write them on your gates. Write them where you will see them every time you come into the house, every time you leave the house, just as a reminder. And so people do this. As a matter of fact, there are little boxes made just for this, especially Jewish homes use these and others. And this can be a great reminder. You're just reminding yourself all the time because it's so easy to forget in a world that is bombarding you with other ideas. And there's other ways than than this. I mean, I've walked up to houses and seen something like this. That's good to have there too because it's that reminder, it's that presence. The bottom line here is to be diligent and deliberate about filling your little human sponges with good, clean, living water. It's been said that the best way to recognize a lie is to know the truth ahead of time. I mean, that's why I remember my mom asking me one time, oh, how was school today? Oh, it was great. She said, that's funny because the neighbor said you came back into the house about 10 (laughs) a.m. You know the truth, you catch the lie. So you've got to teach your kids the truth. And this is going to require something of you parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles and friends and godparents. You can't teach what you don't know. 
So if you need to switch some things around in your life for your own spiritual development, then do it. I mean, that usually starts with with being in community with other believers. You know, church, or even better, church in a small group, because small groups are where church really happens in a, in a deeper and more meaningful way. Connections with other people, community. You know, I, and I know that's hard for some, because you're working or, or things like that, but you can probably fit a small group into your weekly schedule somewhere, or a Bible study. It's no secret that the biggest influence on your kids is not what you say, it's what you do. Parents teach primarily by example. So it's your responsibility to live in such a way that your kids will know what your priorities are. Well, they're going to know that anyway. Make sure it's the right priorities. You know, it's like I say, uh, schedules are tough these days, but I'll tell you what. In our technological world, there are so many opportunities to hear some of the best Christian teachers that have ever lived on YouTube, on uh, so many different places. So one more point. In a minute, we're going to have some families come up and, and dedicate their children to the Lord. So I'm excited about this. It's a time for parents to promise to raise their children to be filled with living water to be raised in the ways of God. It's also a time to present the child before God, which, and there's biblical precedent for that. Bible tells us children are a gift from God. But like everything and everyone on this earth, we recognize that children belong first and foremost to the one who created them, to God. Parents have been given not only the gift of the child, but the profound responsibility of caring for that child, and also the wonderful privilege of enjoying and loving that little one. I had such a blast at VBS this week, because the kids are amazing, you know? I didn't have to take them home with me, which I guess that's where it's... (laughs) But it is, it's an amazing gift from God, but children belong to God, given as gifts to parents. And so it's only proper and appropriate that children be delivered or dedicated back to God. And we're told in, this, in the Bible of a woman named Hannah. And uh, she had been, for years, couldn't have kids. And uh, so she prayed and she prayed. And, and finally, she got pregnant. And she had this child, and she named him Samuel. And Samuel grew up to become one of the greatest prophets in the history of the Jewish people. She took him to the tabernacle and dedicated him before the Lord. And... We read that Mary and Joseph brought the baby Jesus to the temple in Jerusalem in order to present him before the Lord. So this is a, this is a very solid biblical concept. And so with that, we're going to have some families come up and do that. And let's start right here. <laughs> now, this is kind of a cool thing, I, I, I got to tell you, because um, we, you guys came into the office one day and... Uh, and you said there's, um, that there was a family that wanted to dedicate their child, but they're in Washington. Yes. <laughs> so it's like, huh, that's different. So I contacted them, and we went through some, some details to see, make sure we're on the same page of what that is. And, and I'm going to ask you when you come up what, uh, how this all came about. So um, how about if you do come up, and if you would hand me that microphone that's sitting right there. Come on up, guys. here. The mom and dad and Aaliyah, let's come over to this side. And you guys right here, yeah, that's great. So, you guys flew down from Washington we for did. today. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, how about that, huh? Yeah, all right. <laughs> so, I'll let one of you tell us why, how this all worked out. Okay, well, I have always been... um, This is Kimmy. Yes, I'm Kimmy. Nice to meet you guys. This is Brian. This is Brian, my husband, and Aaliyah. Aaliyah, Daniel, and Tiffany. Say hi. Hi. Say hi. Yeah, Brian. Yeah. It's all good. 
happens a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah. it does. <laughs> and then these are her godparents. Yes. Tiffany and Danny. Yay. Me too. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Can I just uh, take that microphone back if oh, you don't yeah, mind? You know, like, what do you want to say? Um. <laughs> You're <shy>. Good enough. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's well, okay. so tell us how it is that, that this worked out, that you guys came down. Here, can I have it back? Thank you. Watch out. Come here. Okay. Well, we had a very smooth flight. I was very happy about that. First time flying in a while, so this was awesome. But she... Um, I was a Catholic, but I am like full on Christian now, and uh, she loves Jesus so much. Like she prays all the time, and so as soon as I was pregnant with her, I was like, "These guys are perfect to be her godparents. They're just like the perfect role models." And she's like my sister, so I was like, "This is amazing." And um, she she's the sweetest soul ever, and I was really blessed to have her. So. And they live here. Yeah, they live here in Palmdale. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that's really great. Yeah, it was, it's been a while, but it was so nice to see them, and this was all worth it, and she's really excited, too. As you can see, she's, like, all over the stage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, yeah. So we're so excited, and thank you, Dave, for being so flexible with us yeah, and sure. making this work and making it possible. So thank you. Scheduling was a little more difficult than oh, usual, yeah, but it was, <laughs> it was yes, not a big it deal. Was. It was fine. <laughs> and it's my birthday, it's too. It's your birthday. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Happy yes. birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Kimmy. Happy birthday to you. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. Well, um, today Ryan and Kimmy are bringing their daughter, Aaliyah, to uh, present first themselves yes, and I'm then her yes. uh, before the Lord our God. And accompanying them are Daniel and Tiffany, who are their, who will be her godparents. And uh, witnessing this as well, you guys here and our whole congregation. So, parents, by loving God with your heart, soul, mind, and strength, you will teach her to do the same. And you will model before her uh, a wonderful love for God to develop that in her herself. And by coming forward before God and his people, do you hereby declare your desire to de dedicate yourself yes. uh, and your daughter to the Lord? Yes. Yes. All right. Now I'm going to ask you to enter into uh, the following commitment in the presence of God and his people so that Aaliyah may walk in the abundant life that Christ offers. Do you... Ryan and Kimmy, bow by God's help and in partnership with the church to provide this child a Christian home of love and peace yes. and to raise her in the truth of our Lord's instruction and discipline and to encourage her to one day trust Christ as her Lord and Savior. Yes, yes we do. Modeling this um, kind of love cannot really be done alone. It requires the help of others. And for this reason, parents sometimes call upon the help of Godparents. And so I now direct my questions to you. By coming forward before God and his people, do you declare your desire to help Ryan and Kimmy fulfill the vows they have just made uh, by becoming, oh, she's so comfortable there, <laughs> becoming <laughs> her godparents? If so, please respond by saying we do. We do. All right. I now ask that you enter into the following commitment. So that Aaliyah may walk in the abundant life that Christ offers, do you vow by God's help to encourage her parents in their effort to raise a godly child? Okay. Julie? Will you get me that stuff that's right over there behind the green decoration? Yeah, over there. Folders and books. Now, in order to help with uh, filling her full of living water, we have these little books, a Little God Time for Kids, which are very uh, age appropriate for her to be able to go through. Did you, can I show it to you? Yeah. Look at this book. This is your book. Wow. Wow. What do you say? You are welcome. <laughs> and. Let me find the right one. No. 
Oh, no. The only one that's closed. <laughs> we also have this little certificate for you guys uh, oh, to uh, recognize this day. And it's an exciting thing. And now what I would like to do, can I pray for you? Will you come over here and I'll come down here on your level? <laughs> hey, that's good. Lord, I pray for this little one, that you would even at this moment direct her heart to where you would have her to be when she grows up. I pray that your spirit would fill her and that she would learn your ways and grow up into a woman of God to raise her own children that way. And Lord, I also pray for her parents and her godparents that you will work in their lives, encourage them when the times are difficult, and uh, help them clearly see the path that you would lay out before them. And Lord, we thank you for their dedication and their promise to you for the sake of this girl. We thank you for them too, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, thank you guys. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Here's the microphone. Thank you. Dave and Diana, you guys want to come up? David, want to come up? Oh, okay. Saw you every day this week because you were a valuable part of our uh, summer blast program here working with the kids. This is David and Diana. Jaime? Jaime? Jaime. Jaime. Right? Yes. Okay, good. And uh, yeah, you guys have been at the church for roughly how long? Whichever one of you wants this. About six months. We just moved to Hellendale at the end of last year. And we started attending. Hold, the, hold that up, high, oh, so. we started attending the beginning of this year, so it's been about six months. Yeah. So, and we are glad to have you here. They jumped yes. right in. Yes. Thank you. And so, and this is your son. This is my son Daniel. My husband David. Daniel, my, how old are you? How old are you, Daniel? <laughs> Not sure right now. He's four. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we are awesome. It's glad to have you here. Yes. And I love what you're doing right now yes. because uh, it makes a difference in the world. Absolutely. And so let me go ahead and go through some of these same things here. With You are presenting first yourself and then your child before the Lord. And it is uh, the promise to, to raise the child in such a way that she will or he will grow up knowing the Lord. So, um, by loving God with heart, soul, mind, and strength, you will teach him to do the same yes. by example. And you will model before Daniel a wonderful love for God that he will want for himself. So, by coming forward before God and his people, do you hereby declare your desire to dedicate yourselves and Daniel to the Lord? If so, please respond by saying, we do. Awesome. Uh, and so now I'll ask you to enter into this commitment in the presence of God and his people so that Daniel may walk in the abundant life that Christ offers. Do you, David and Diana, vow by God's help and in partnership with the church to provide this child a Christian home of love and peace and to raise him in the truth of our Lord's instruction and discipline and to encourage him to one day trust Christ as his own Savior. All right. Um, let, me, uh, let me pray for you guys. Can you come over here, Daniel? And just stand right here. You know what? I'm going to come right down here on your level, if that's okay. Well, I'm still a little taller. Is this better? <laughs> what do you think? Nothing's better, is it? <laughs> Can I pray for you? Is that okay? All right. Thank you. Lord, we lift this young man up to you and ask your blessing on him. We ask your spirit to uh, guard over him, protect him in, in, a, in an uncertain world, a dangerous world, a world of 
conflicting ideas and that he would find your way in the midst of all that. We ask your blessing on him, Lord. And we ask your blessing on his parents, that they will have wisdom in challenging times to understand what you would have them to do and and how to uh, create the household that will be a witness to their kids and to you. We pray for strength between them, that they will uh, be a perfect team to raise these children. We ask uh, ask you to send your Holy Spirit on them to uh, empower them for this challenging task. And Lord, we thank you for their heart that desires to uh, have their children know you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, for you, we have... Did you see the book? Thank you. You like that? I like the colors. I like the red there. That's pretty cool. There's a green up there. And here you are as a certificate commemorating the day. And we thank you guys for being here and for making this step. One more set today. The Adrian's family. Come on up here, guys. Hello. <laughs> well, you and you hold this and tell us a little bit about yourselves. How long you've been at the church here? And um. so, uh, name's Kevin. Wife Ashley, our daughter Genevieve, and our son Grayson. We've been coming to this church. I don't know, a little over six months now. Yeah. Um, my wife originally just looked online because we live in Barstow, so. She was trying to find a local church for us, and so with that, she started coming here first while I was still working nights and crazy hours on weekends and things like that, so God kind of worked all that out, and I was finally able to attend, and so I've been coming alongside with my wife about six months. Yeah, and she may have been here, I was thinking about nine, and you found us through Mops. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember meeting you and, and inviting you to Mops that first time. It's a great program. Um, and you were also, both of you guys, I've seen all of you, because you were here for VBS all week long, weren't you? Mm-hmm. How was it? Good. It was good. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Ashley was helping with the snacks area, and it was, uh, it was just a lot of fun. So, um, I'll wait on that. So, let's go through this. And I know you guys, and I know your heart, and just like you guys out there, and your desire to raise your kids in this way before the Lord, to present him before the Lord and her, and, uh, and to invoke God's power and blessing into your family. So you come before us today to make a vow before God to raise this little one and this little one in the ways of the Lord, to provide a house that is filled with Christian love, Christian power, to... Uh, to guide these kids into the knowledge of the Lord. Is that your desire, and is that your vow before yes, God? Yes. Okay. Um, and you have family here. Yes. Who will also be a part of this process uh, to, uh, to help you raise these kids and to be with you. Um, and with that, can I pray for him? Yeah. Hey. Can I pray for you? Would that be Okay. You know what? I have a book for you. Would you like a book? (laughs) And you can share his book if that's okay. Because this is good for your age, too. I think you'll like it. And you already like it. I see that. (laughs) So I'm going to pray for you. Lord, I pray for Grayson. And uh, as, as as we look at the miracle of what every child may become through your power and your spirit, it's just a such a thing to celebrate. 
And so, Lord, we pray that you will have your hand on this child as he grows up, that he will have an awareness of you from this young, early age and, and turn his heart towards you in difficult times. We pray that you protect him from the challenges of this world and keep him safe and keep him focused on you. And we pray the same thing for Kevin and Ashley and Genevieve, that you would protect them and let there be a, a spirit of unity in this family that will lead to uh, these children knowing you and the, for this family to have an impact in the world around them through your power and your love. Ask your blessing on them, your protection for them. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. All right, and here's a certificate for you guys. Look at that, it's got your name on it. All right. Oh, and I want to, one quick thing. Um, Kevin, as you've met, he's done uh, communion. You will also be starting our men's group yes, sir. at the beginning of August. And yep. so watch for a sign-up list. It's going to be on Monday, or Saturday mornings Saturday morning at tonight. 9 o'clock. Yep. And so uh, I think it's going to be awesome. You've got a great book booked out for the guys. So we'll see a, a sign-up list next week, and guys get on that list, and we look forward to seeing you here. Thank you guys for being here and uh, for being part of this church. And then there's just one more little part that I want to cover for all three couples. So, because the church, I ask you guys to make a vow as well. Um, faith grows best in community with other people. It really does. It works together when we're alongside each other to encourage and to, um, to counsel and to help each other grow through some of the difficult things that happen in, in life. And there's a lot of those. So parents have a primary responsibility. But we believe that parents need the help and support of a community of believers. And so I direct my questions now to you, the church. By being present in God's house today, do you hereby declare yourselves to be the children of God because you trust in Christ for forgiveness of sins and a gift of eternal life? If this is true, please respond by saying, we do. Yes. Would you please stand? Because I ask now that you make the following commitment to those who have been up here on this platform so that these children may walk in the abundant life that Christ offers. Do you vow, by God's help, to be faithful in your calling as members of the body of Christ, to help parents be faithful to God, and to help teach and train these children in the ways of the Lord so that one day they will trust Christ as their Lord and Savior. If you accept this responsibility, please respond by saying, we do. Yes. Now, what that means is make an effort to get to know these families. Connect with them in some area of the church here so that you can be a, a part of this community that raises these kids up to who they should be. And I'm sure you guys, you have your own church up in Everett, is it? And uh, I'm sure you will find this up there as well. So uh, with that, thank you for your commitment. Thank you for your commitment and yours and yours. And uh, let me pray. Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you that we are not stuck in this world with nothing, that you've given us instructions on how to raise healthy kids even in unhealthy climates that you have not abandoned us here, that you are here for us, that you work with us, that you empower us and bless us. Lord, we pray that the, the, the things we've heard today, the words we've sung, and the words that we've pronounced over these families and these children would be a powerful thing in their lives, a powerful influence. We thank you for this opportunity, and we pray these things in the name of your Son. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We'll see you guys next week. Thank you. Uh,